grab it here. <laughs> it's a really hot day yeah, for us, like in, in this region. So it's, we're talking like um, 27 Celsius. So that's, that's <laughs> getting, a, getting a bit too hot for us. But anyway, we have to try and make videos. So I got a SCSI memory card. So let's have a little look at some background information first and then get to the card. So SCSI, so what is SCSI? So let's say um small computer system interface. And um back in the day and I'll put the links to these um uh, websites in, in the comments. Uh, you know, back in the day it was very popular for um connecting in um hard drives and C D ROMs and, and for various other uh, usages. In um, computers like the Amiga and, and, and very many others, and in, even to a great extent in um, early like workstation PCs and, and servers and enterprise equipment, and then um, it b basically what happened to this is that it got transmorphed and virtualized, and then it, um, it didn't actually completely disappear, just that it. Um, reincarnated itself in various different other both physical and um, and implementation forms but uh, it, it, this was the basis for lots of um, like SOS and type equipment, uh, protocols equipment and interface technologies and yep but anyway so this is the standard and um, that's what was used on the card that I got acquired so as they standardized the SCSI <coughs> setup, then um, we had um, people making controller trips, and um, Western Digital um, created something called the 33C93, um, and um, so that's the that chip was used on on this card, and it supports various different types of uh, protocol interface into the actual SCSI discs and. Um, uh, also, this card actually does have an um, uh, NXT EDA interface, but it's uh, the, the headers aren't soldered and the, and the LED is not soldered, so we won't actually care about that that much. I'm mainly interested in the SCSI um, memory card, but um, if you want to read out more details about the card, then um, this is the you know, site to use. And also, this site is actually very good for. You can even use this just to search for say, what kind of equipment um, would you like to find, try and find and, and purchase. And it actually has photos so that if you have um, listings on seller sites then you can actually um, look, at the look at the pictures on this site and compare it to the pictures on the um, site and see if it's the actual, actual, if the equipment is actually correct. Plus this has actually um, access to the um, different variations of the driver disks um, so that you can actually see that the, the driver disks are still or drivers are still available for the for the hardware and also on the same theme as uh, when you're picking up hardware it's actually good to see if you can actually find the uh, manual for it so in, in this case I actually found the um, original Commodore manual for it and it goes through all the Hardware related setup um, procedures and um, configurations, and um, but also then it um, talks about how to initialize the, the hard drive. And, um, and when it comes to the hard drive, the SCSI interface, then I'm still working on trying to decide what SCSI um, emulation card to use because I'd like to buy a SCSI flash emulation card that simulates uh, both. Uh, th there are solutions that simulate hard drives but then there are also solutions that can, uh, the same card can actually fake simulate several different di devices on the SCSI um, interface. Um, so you, you can for example you can have a file, one file for a hard drive and one file for a CD-ROM uh, and, and stuff. So I'm still looking at it a little bit though. So, so Primarily now we will um, have a look and, and um, see how the, how the card performs as a um, memory card, and then get uh, come back with the um, um, activating the SCSI interface. 
so here we have the actual card and um, just a few comments this is the <laughs> 50 um, pin um, cable it was the initial standard for all SCSI devices so all CD-ROMs and hard drives came with this um, type of cable connection and then we have the old style ATX um, power connector a bit junky so I think I might actually I think it's the cables mainly feel a bit so I might change that up but since we're not going to use the SCSI part right now stay as is. and um, just the one important observation is that um, uh, there are many different um, uh, SCSI boards um, out there for the Commodore Amiga uh, and um, some of them <laughs> actually it's interesting some of them can boot automatically and some of them can't and it's depending on what ROM you have so in, in this case this board actually has a, a bootable ROM so if you put a if you then have a, a hard disk or an emulated hard disk then um, you can make the system automatically boot from the hard drive. In some cases you, you, you get a board where, where the ROMs are, are not what you think they are and then it's just a it's basically a SCSI interface board without the capabilities out of it. And then you have here in this board you have the memory here. So. And um, also you have an interesting fact that it was standardized this interface, the external interface to, to which was this uh, like an, to an external SCSI device. And that's compatible with the Apple, also Apple used um, SCSI, so if you had um, some Apple accessories then you could actually connect to that connector. Um, uh, six star, academic 16 kilobyte out of boot ROM, so that was an important factor, it says that it is actually out of boot cable. And it's uh, the these sockets you can put in um, a half, one or two megabytes of RAM. So this one has two megabytes of RAM on it. Um, and there was a, I think it's here you configure the memory, and then there was a jump where you configure the out of boot. No, that was the. Here you see the memory configuration, and then here I think that one was the booting code. It's described in the manual also, so it's not really. It says options, but as I said, that we were lucky enough to, or I'm lucky enough that we, the manual was easy to locate. So, so that's the way it looks. And then the idea is that one would put the hard drive here. So that would be a three and a half inch um, drive that you would um, screw into this and then you'd have the cable going there and the power. So. And um, with these, um, some of the flash uh, based SCSI uh, storage emulations there, you can, you can buy a bracket also which is, has the holes in the right place so, so that you can actually screw it on. You can screw the whole emulation board to the this one. And you see how it looks on this side. And that looks a bit. Aha! Look at that, it's all. And then, of course, you get this uh, mod. I don't really know why that's there. damage and they know that this hasn't been in the best of environments. But um, it was kind of sold as, well not totally untested, it was um, basically some kind of a vague description like between the lines that it, uh, <laughs> it, it, it might have been working before it was sold. So um, anyway, so my idea is that um, whatever, it's, it's a board, it, it looks in quite good shape. I've seen much worse. Um, it actually doesn't have that much um, circuitry. 
and um, even these uh, the controller chip and then the, these logic chips they are you know you, you can um, you can get them also separately sold in various channels so the um, I thought what we do now is the first pass is we're going to test this as a memory card and see if it works and then I'll be following up with an episode I'll probably actually make a yeah, make a video about um, those a little bit how many different cards that are available for flash emulation on the SCSI interface and then uh, I'll, I won't be buying all of them that are expensive at all. I'll, I'll pick one of them to actually take home and, uh, and see if I can get it to work. So, anyway, I um, had to put the air conditioning on. I'm sorry for the background noise. It's getting a bit too hot. Anyway, um, I'm going to put it in one of these Soros um, two slots and the Amiga has 2000 that I have has five of them and just ignore these. These are for the if you insert a PC emulation card then you get the ESA bus or ASA bus. So these are ASA bus and then ESA bus. You can actually add two more ASA buses. But anyway, we just ignore those so so just hide those from you and then you have the Zoro bus. So this is pretty much like a PC but then of course the the interface um, is completely different. And um, I've already treated this with some contact spray and uh, cleaned out the slot as best I could. So. But I have no idea if any of these slots work. I, don't, I have no idea if the um, control logic for the um, or the buffer chips or anything for the Zorro um, slots work. So. Now this also, my, my computer is pending another fix is that um, the Agnus uh, socket is not very good on this one. So I, I have plans to swap it out, so let's not um, be um, completely irritated <laughs> with this one if it randomly crashes, because the, the, that's a, I think I've identified it to a mechanical corrosion problem in the socket, and, um, because I can get it running stable if, if one messes with it, messes with the chip in, and the socket mechanically until you have it running, and then it, it'll run stable for quite a while before it fails again. But as I said, that's a pending fix. So. Um, as I said, sometimes it runs stable, and then we'll just, and it'll be good enough to test this. And um, I have a pending initiative to change that socket. And um, they made this very, um, oh, doing the wrong, wrong socket. So just to put it in the right place. It's a relatively tight fit. Comes down. Make sure you press it in and see that the card actually lands in the socket or, or in the in the right place and put the screw in here and this seems to be a bit maybe slight not I think this, um, the um, end holder might have got a little bit twisted in transport or something. It doesn't completely line up the way I would expect. Now it lines up if I force it into place. So anyway, I will um, work on getting the screw in place and then um, Move the camera, and then we'll try and boot it and see um, see what happens. So this is going to be the first startup. And as I said, if it crashes or black screens or stuff, then you know it's it's an old machine, so and it has that known problem with the sockets. So let's see. Good. Uh, I think it's the wrong 
So I've got four up that house left. Oh, there you go. Half megabyte. So this this was a half a megabyte unit. We just take F1 and see if it crashes. Or should we look at F2? So we got um, half a megabyte of chip RAM and two of FOST. Oh, that's pretty good. And we take. Okay, let's risk the memory tester. It is actually very hot in here. Um, I would say 27, 30 Celsius, even, uh, even when I was running the, I just took the air condition to cool it down a bit, but, but let's say 25. So it a, plus the thing is that this is very old equipment, so um, the EMC protection, electromagnetic um, interference protection is uh, without the case on. Is non-existent. So the, the, this type of uh, this decade of electronics, 30 years ago, if you have it open like this, and you have Wi-Fi running, and you have your cell phone running, uh, and, and stuff like that, then um, you're actually liable to cause memory faults just to just by having the um, <laughs> having the system open. So, so just by having it sitting like this, it can crash because of. All, all kinds of modern electronic interference that never existed in 30 years ago. And, and actually this board, it, it runs more stable when it's um, actually in the, in the box. And that, that could be, of course be for mechanical reasons also, but if it's, if it's screwed in the box then it's more stable. But as I said, I mean, I, I really need to go and change that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't blame the memory if it um, if it has crashed. Yeah, it's crashed. But as I said, it, it's very hard to blame the, me the blame the memory card because, as I said, it's open like this, and, and I, I do know this board has has some issues. So I'm not too worried about it. And as an academic point, I've actually noticed this board becomes more stable the more you use it, like if you're running it for hours, it tends to be more stable. So, but as I said, I'm not, not in this particular instance blaming the, blaming the uh, extra card, or, or I can't really prove it's the extra card that's the problem. Um, But I'm going to run some more long-term testing uh, for my satisfaction. I, I know without changing that um, socket, it's probably not that meaningful testing that one can do. But um, yeah, I, I see it looks good. So that's uh, two and a half megabytes of RAM. Cool. So, anyway, I hope you found that interesting. I thought it was interesting. <laughs> Two megabytes of memory added to the computer. Oh, those were the days. You can't count the memory by megabytes. You know, the, it, yeah, back in the, back in the day, I, I actually didn't, um, I couldn't afford this type of equipment, like an Amiga 2000 or SCSI memory card combo. It was just, it was, way beyond my my pay grade in those days so it's kind of cool that one can actually just pick up this stuff for, ah, I wouldn't say nothing it's but um, a, a, I would say a reasonable cost yeah so um, what I will do now is I will just um, keep it running and see how it works and as I said I, I will deal with that socket swap out um, so the time so I'm, I'm not yeah I'm not blaming the memory card at this point in time. So anyway, the next uh, down the road someday there will be a um, a solution, uh, 
storage device of one type or another added to the SCSI interface, so we'll um, see what I can find. What is of reasonable cost, and yeah, probably make some videos about that. So stay, stay tuned, and um, see you in the next one.